Hello everyone, welcome to Awkward Author. My name is Alyssa Grasso and this is my weekly vlog and podcast about my sometimes awkward author life. Uh, it is still awkward. As you can see, I am still in my messy office and have not yet moved. I, I don't have an update to, to report to you. I really hoped I would, um, but I'm still waiting to hear back on something. And so I uh, can't give you any details about that. I am in my glasses today um, to add to the awkwardness. I normally have my contacts on, but uh, alas, the contacts that I wear are on back order right now. I actually got a notice, you know, I'd ordered them back in January. Um, because, you know, I was going to be needing some soon and I left myself plenty of time, I thought, uh, to order some and I got a notice, this was back around like the middle of January, the contacts were on back order from the manufacturer but they expected them to be in January 30th and I was like, oh, okay, that'll be no problem, I got plenty of contacts till then, um, I, I wear daily contact lenses and anyway, uh, we are now uh, approaching the middle of February and I still don't have my contacts in and, uh, you know, I, they, I, I contacted the place that I buy them from and they said, yeah, they, they still haven't come in yet from the manufacturer. So anyway, that's where I'm at. So I don't know what's going on. Um, I, I tried ordering them from somewhere else and... Uh, I got a confirmation that, you know, the order went through, but I haven't gotten a confirmation that they've shipped them yet. So there's no guarantee uh, that those are not going to be on back order too. I really don't know, but I was just kind of like, well, I better have a backup plan in case, you know, uh, I never get my contacts, but I don't know if this is such a good backup plan either. So that's what's going on there. I don't know if, you know, this has anything to do with, I don't know where my contacts are even made, like where they're manufactured, but then, you know, I hear all this stuff about uh, those of you that are over in the UK, how like, you know, they're, they're stockpiling medicines and stuff right now in case, you know, uh, you know, with Brexit, they're not able to, to get stuff or they're going to be paying like a ridiculous amount of money to get stuff, um, you know, after the, the Brexit deal. Uh, so yeah, anyway, I'm like, hmm, I wonder if they're stockpiling contact lenses too. And that's what's going on. I mean, I can't imagine there's that many people with eyesight as bad as mine that needs, uh, you know, the crazy high prescription contacts that I need, but there might be, there might be some of you out there and that's what they might be stockpiling. So anyway, with all craziness going on, like I really have not been in a writing frame of mind. I've been trying to do some packing here. Um, I had, my, my landlord had to come yesterday. She was just gonna come, you know, take a look at stuff to see, you know, what she needs to do um, to turn the place over. But then someone called her, so she actually like showed the place to yesterday. So I had that disruption that was like right in the middle of the day. So, you know, that kind of impacts my ability to get stuff done here. But it was one day, I'll, you know, give her that. And uh, anyway, it'll be this weekend too. But uh, yeah, so that's been going on and I just have not been writing. I mean, I made a little bit of progress on my, my current work in progress, but uh, not anything significant. I don't even know what my word count is right now. Like I said, I deleted some stuff and uh, redoing some stuff. So, you know, maybe I did another chapter. I don't know. Since I last talked to you, I don't think it's been much more than that. Maybe two chapters, maybe two chapters since I last talked to you, but um, that's, that's really it. So that's not too exciting. Last week, I, d I don't know how many of you are on Twitter and follow book Twitter, writer Twitter, whatever you want to call it. Like there's a controversy last week um, where an author, um, Jason Heller, made a comment, uh, you know, posted a tweet that was something like, you know, follow your dreams, you know, quit your day job kind of thing. And I, I saw it as like an inspirational, like motivational kind of thing for people who want to be authors. A lot of authors like just ganged up on him really and were like, don't, you know, don't quit your day job, you know, be practical, all this stuff. And you know, I mean, I guess there's different ways of looking at things and I, it, it all depends on what your situation is, obviously. And I, I say this all the time in these videos, like you have to do what works for you, you know, read all the books out there or watch videos, whatever, take advice and internalize it and do what works for you. I mean, that's what you should do with anything, not just writing. I mean, if you're going to like, you know, read some guru or follow some leader or somebody who says, you know, you must do this, I, I think you should question that. I mean, I think you should 
get a lot of different opinions on things and internalize things and find something that works for you, honestly. Um, so I would say that with any piece of advice. And so this kind of like, you know, don't follow your dreams kind of thing, which wasn't what I guess people were saying, but they were like, you know, don't quit your day job type of thing. And yes and no. I mean, quitting your day job doesn't necessarily mean um, going broke because there are a lot of ways to make money out there. And from my personal experience, having a day job is probably one of the worst ways to make money, like a true like nine to five soul crushing kind of day job. You, you probably aren't going to make that much money. I mean, I don't know. It depends. It depends if you're really lucky or you have a certain degree or something. I mean, if you're a computer programmer or, you know, I don't know, some big corporate bigwig. Yeah, you're probably going to make um, decent money working for someone else. But otherwise, you're probably better off like doing things yourself because if you're if you're a hard worker, I guess, you're probably going to make a lot more money working for yourself than working for someone else. I mean, that's just been my personal experience in life and you know, there are certain benefits um that come when you have a job where you work for someone else. Um, not all jobs where you work for someone else do you have these benefits, but a lot of times you'll have things like health benefits or um, you know, insurance and things like that, that, you know, can make a job worthwhile. Although in all honesty, like, I don't know, uh, health insurance is, you know, people see it as like a necessary thing and it depends on your situation. I mean, if you're someone who's like at the doctor all the time and you have a medical condition, then you probably do need health insurance. But the vast majority of the population, I mean, you know, if you need to go to the doctor once in a while, you can, and you can pay for it. And, you know, it's not going to be that big a deal. I mean, now if you need major surgery or you have a serious condition or something, then yeah, you might need health insurance, but, um, it, it, it isn't a necessary thing. We'll just say that. And, uh, you know, and that's, of course, this is for us people. Obviously, if you're somewhere else, you've got a different situation. You've got stockpiled contact lenses now. Um, yeah. And and by the way, you know, I've had jobs with health insurance and, and my contact lenses, which is, you know, they were never paid for. I mean, sometimes I got like a little credit for them or something. But honestly, when you have eyes like mine, like it doesn't really cover much of anything. What I'm just saying is that, you know, a day job is one way to go about it. But if you're finding that your day job is interfering with the life that you want to live, um, maybe it's time to, you know, shake things up and do something a little different, whether that means going in business for yourself, doing freelance work, um, whatever. I mean, if you want to be a writer, you've got to build your life around that. You you can't build your life around some other thing. Like if what your you know, what is your main priority? Maybe your main priority is raising your family or your main priority is having some fancy house or something. But if your main priority is to, you know, write books, if that's the one thing you really, really want to do don't waste your time with other stuff that isn't going to get you there, I think. So I'll tell you my personal story. My personal story is that in the past I have had day jobs and I wouldn't say they were awful or soul crushing, but they did, you know, impact my life in the sense that like, you know, I was working all day and I'd come home and I simply didn't have the energy, you know, after I'd made dinner for myself, after I'd taken care of my animals, I, you know, that's when I was allowing myself to write and it just, you know, I was drained at that point and I really wasn't getting that much work done. I mean, it took me years, years to try and write a novel that way. And I reached a point where I was like, you know, I want to finish this novel. Like I set a goal for myself that like, I'm going to finish this novel by the end of the year. This was the first novel um, that I had published, my novel popular. So what I did was um, I had a job. I had a day job working at a public library. So it wasn't, you know, it was a pleasant job. I was around books, but it wasn't, you know, it wasn't leading to, to me getting my author career off the ground. That's for sure. It wasn't leading to me finishing my novel. So I'm like, I got to make a change. And so what I ended up doing was I, I quit my job, but I, you know, I had another thing lined up, which was not a regular day job per se. It was a commission sales job, uh, working for a book distributor. So I was still in the same sort of line of work. I was selling books to librarians. So I was, you know, in that, that world still, but I could set my own hours and, you know, live in a way that fit my schedule. And so that is what I did. And honestly, that was October that it was the beginning of October that I started, uh, working my sales job of that year. 
I guess that was 2008. And by the, yeah, by the end of the year, I had finished my novel. And so, you know, well, finished that draft of the novel. It ended up, you know, getting, you know, reworked and stuff once it did get picked up for publication. But I wouldn't have done that if I had quit my job and, you know, made that a priority for myself. So, you know, um, I know there's a tendency to say, you know, you, you can't work when you're hungry or you can't work when you, you don't know where the next paycheck's coming from, but it depends on what kind of person you are and it depends on how motivated and driven you are. And, you know, if you set a goal for yourself and you're finding that your current you know, job or whatever situation isn't allowing you to reach that goal, then you got to figure out a way to change things. And it may not be quitting your job. It may just be rearranging your schedule or something like that, or, you know, rearranging the way you think things through. But yeah, um, so there are different ways, I guess, to go about it. And it depends on what kind of person you are and, you know, how things work, you know, for you. But I think for me, you know, once I set my mind to something and know that it's what I'm going to do, um, if I then, you know, live my life in a way where I am trying to, you know, follow that, like, or how can I put it? When I set a goal for myself and then I, I act on it, you know, then I show that I'm serious about following that goal, things seem to fall in place. And, uh, so that's what I'll say there. I'm not saying quit your job. I'm saying you got to find what works for you, figure out what you want and, you know, go after it. Be serious um, about pursuing your dreams. Okay, so that was not the only, uh, you know, issue that came up last week on Writer Twitter. The other issue that came up was an editor, someone who works as a freelance editor, put out a post, um, you know, recommending that all writers uh, should hire an editor if they wanted to get their manuscript picked up for publication, if they wanted to get an agent, that sort of thing, and was advising things like take out a loan to pay for an editor or something like that, um, which you probably should not do. So if you want to go the traditional route, you do not need to pay out of pocket to hire an editor. Um, how it works generally in the traditional world, if you're going to get an agent first, um, you query agents, um, you know, if they like what they're hearing, they'll ask to see, you know, either a full or partial manuscript. Um, and then if they really like what they're seeing, they'll offer to represent you. And um, it's a long drawn out process. The other thing that you can do in some cases is if it's a small publisher and they accept unagented submissions you can send directly to the slush pile that sort of thing uh, that's how my first book got picked up so i didn't have an agent i had sent directly to a small publisher who accepted manuscripts without agents and um, eventually in the long dried out process eventually uh, my book was published i did not hire an editor ahead of time um, i did not even use a critique group for that book i had had worked with some different critique groups in the past i felt like I was pretty good at self-editing, but as it turned out, even after my book was picked up for publication, I ended up having to write a whole second half of the book, which wasn't there. So like I had like a last chapter, that last chapter became part two of the book. So it became much longer because uh, my editor rightfully pointed out that, uh, you know, the book ended very abruptly and it, it really needed a, a more nuanced, uh, you know, more explained sort of ending. So. Anyway, uh, now that editor was the editor that worked for the publisher, so obviously I did not pay him um, for these, you know, for this feedback. And then, of course, um, the publisher has copy editors, that sort of thing, who, you know, clean up your your book before publication. So you don't pay for any of that. Uh, so, you know, when you go the traditional route, obviously you get a smaller percentage of the book sales. You just get, you know, a percentage of the royalties, not the whole shebang like you do when you're, when you're self-published. But then when you're self-published, you are paying to have, you know, covers design, paying to have editors and proofreaders and that sort of thing, which when you're, you know, a traditional author, you don't pay out of pocket for anything. Like everything's covered by the publisher. They supposedly, um, you know, will do marketing. You probably are going to have to do some marketing on your own as well. Um, and, uh, you know, unless you're like a really big name author. So that's how, you know, that's one of the trade-offs with, you know, between traditional and indie. Um, so always something to consider. If you don't have uh, money to invest in publishing your book independently, then, you know, traditional uh, might make more sense, although you're not, you know, it's going to be a long drawn out process. It's not going to happen very quickly. Anyway, the point is that 
depending on, you know, what your plan is, if your plan is to be a traditionally published author, then you probably shouldn't pay out of pocket for an editor before you query an agent or submit your book to a publisher. Uh, that's generally not the practice of most authors who've gone the traditional route. Um, now, there are some who have actually, you know, hired a freelance editor to clean up their book um, before they queried and submitted and have had, you know, good success with this. So it is something you can do, but it's, it's not something that's required and it's not something that a lot of authors do. So um, just be mindful, again, of advice, um, you know, obviously do what works for you and also consider the source of the advice. If it's a, you know, freelance editor who makes her living from editing people's books and she's saying, you know, take out a loan to pay for an editor, um, well, that's all nice and good, but, you know, maybe, maybe you don't really need to do that. And then the one last thing that I wanted to address this week, because this came up um, on a forum or Facebook group or whatever, and it was somebody who was, you know, uh, putting their book out themselves, self-publishing, indie publishing, and, you know, they had set a release date and they were getting all their files uploaded and they, they were worried because they accidentally, you know, like the book was coming out in a week or two weeks or something like that, but they accidentally made the print copies live before it was published and were worried about like unpublishing it and what they should do and all this stuff. And, uh, I, I found it interesting because I think people are under the impression that release dates are this like hard and fast rule and are totally followed. I mean, I had three books come out from a traditional publisher and, you know, I always had a release date for them. The books were always, always available before the release date. Um, I think, you know, a few weeks before. And it's, you know, it's just because part of it is like, you know, you want to make sure when, you know, an author has like a book launch or something, the books are available. So you don't want to be like, you know, waiting until um, the last minute to release the book. And so unless you're like a really big name author again, and there's like, you know, this great flurry of excitement about your book coming out and, you know, you don't want to give spoilers away and stuff like that. Um, unless you're someone like that, there's no real, you know, there, there's a release date set, but nobody follows it. You know, you'll be able to walk into Barnes and Noble or whatever a week before your book comes out and they'll probably be there or, you know, your local bookstore will have it and, and you'll be able to buy copies on Amazon or whatever. Um, it, it's not, it's not something that's really followed. I remember, um, when I was working in a public library, I worked there, um, at least when the, you know, the latter half of JK Rowling's Harry Potter series came out. And that's a book that like, you know, when it was coming out, I think those books always released in July. That was my, my memory. And it was like a Saturday, as I recall. Like, we would, you know, we'd get tons of copies and we were a pretty big library system and we knew there was a huge demand for the book. So we would have, the books would come in and they'd be shipped in these boxes and it was like all marked all over the box, like do not open until, you know, whatever the date was, the release date. And so you know, being librarians, we actually followed rules. I mean, I think there are some people that might have opened it ahead of time, but we would, you know, follow the rule. We wouldn't open it um, until that day. And so we would actually plan it to have, you know, um, make sure we had a cataloger there that day who could, you know, we would do as much of the cataloging ahead of time as we could. Um, and then they'd actually, you know, catalog the books, cover them and, you know, put the stickers on and all that. And then we, you know, fill the holds on them and like, you know, cause obviously there was a huge waiting list already. Um, so we'd put all the holds on and, you know, call people about their holds and stuff. And so that was like, you know, we'd have to plan for that because of, that was a big thing. Um, but if you're not JK Rowling, um, you're probably not going to have to worry about that. So if you are an indie published author and you accidentally make your book available before the official launch, it really doesn't matter. I mean, the worst thing that's gonna happen is you're gonna sell some copies of your book, which is probably a good thing. Um, and you might even get some reviews on the book, which would be nice to have when the book actually goes live and you're you're making like a big stink about it and you know talking all about it on Facebook and Twitter and stuff like that. There's already some good reviews there. Um, that'll probably only help you, not hurt you. So uh, that's the end of my yammering this week. Uh, not, not too exciting, I guess. I am hoping, hoping for uh, good news by the next time I talk to you. I hope I have contacts. Um, I hope I, uh, I have more word on where um I mean I, I pretty much know the place I'm gonna move into guys I mean I don't want to jinx anything but I, I'm
think and it's pretty definite um but now it's i'm dealing with a realtor who's like working with the owners and so it's like uh the communication is is not the best and not the quickest so it's just like a lot of sitting around and waiting and then just uh it's driving me crazy um i i just like you know i want to know that i'm moving in there for sure and i want to know the date so i can kind of like plan things because i feel like everything's up in the air anyway um today it is a snowy icy sort of day here it, it, it isn't that it was a, like a dusting when i went out this morning but now it's actually snowing again and so we might get a few inches of snow and then it's going to turn to ice and then it's going to turn to rain and hopefully that'll wash it all away and clean up the mess but uh anyway i'm just planning on staying here maybe i'll get some writing done probably i won't because i'm just not in that mindset um, I feel like I just I just want to be settled. I just want to be settled so I can just relax and you know um, dive into my projects. But uh, that's kind of like uh, it's kind of like when I had a day job and I just felt like I couldn't uh, you know get the stuff done that I wanted to get done. I don't have a day job right now, guys, but that's what I feel like. Uh, I have a day business, but no, um, and I have craziness craziness going on in my life. So hopefully. Hopefully things get settled soon. Uh, so thank you for watching. Again, my name is Alyssa Grasso. You can find out more about me on my website, alyssagrasso.com. That's A-L-I-S-S-A-G-R-O-S-S-O.com. If you like this, please give it a thumbs up or subscribe. And I will catch up with you guys all again next week. Uh, take care. Keep it awkward or not too awkward or whatever. See you guys soon.